Bonjour, dobry den. Welcome to Weekly with Olivier Vedrin. I am Olivier Vedrin. We will spend together 20 minutes. And uh, at the first part, I will speak about uh, Mayday, Mayday and Heritage. And I will speak about the propaganda, Russian propaganda. And I will speak also about the summit in Brussels between EU and Ukraine. At the second part, I will uh, receive the ambassador of Norway. But let's start with Maidan. Maidan began three years ago. Why? Because Yanukovych didn't sign, didn't want to sign the agreement with EU. And Ukraine, Ukrainian people, went on the street on Maidan to say that they were not agree with the decision of Yanukovych. But now, three years after, what is the heritage of Maidan? The heritage of Maidan, we have several points to discuss about. The first point is that Ukraine will go definitely to the EU and to Europe. Ukraine definitely want to belong to the European family. Ukraine definitely choose the European value. Then that's really the first heritage of Maidan. Ukraine is coming back to Europe. The second heritage of Maidan is the civil society in Ukraine. I was on Maidan during three months. I spoke several times on the Senate of Maidan. I was in the trade union house and I can say I saw the soul of Ukraine. And the soul of Ukraine is the civil society. This new civil society now is here and this new civil society is fighting for Ukraine. And that's really one of the biggest heritage of Maidan, the new Ukrainian civil society. A lot of NGO, a lot of NGO were on Maidan. The engagement of the students the engagement of those NGOs are really new for Ukraine and they are still there. They want to go to Europe and this is also one point of the heritage of Maidan. Another point of the heritage of Maidan is that now in Russia they are afraid about that. They are afraid about this freedom. They are afraid because they know that maybe one day that will happen in Russia. That's why, after Maidan, Putin took Crimea. Putin did a war against Ukraine in the Donbass because he cannot allow Ukraine to be successful. This is impossible for Putin that Ukraine will be successful. That's why he will do everything to destabilize Ukraine and he will continue the war in Donbass. But as I said, Ukraine is unified. Ukraine as a new civil society, Ukraine will never, never, never say no to Europe. Ukraine is on the way to go to Europe and Putin cannot stop that. That's really the big heritage of Maidan, the biggest one, this is now here, Ukraine is a nation, Ukraine will be a nation and Ukraine will stand up and never give up. That's the first point and I think the biggest one. The second great news of this week is what's happened in the European Parliament. Oh, I am very happy. Because now the European Parliament, they understand that we have some problem with the Russian propaganda. Oh my God, three years to understand that the Russian propaganda is really efficient. 
The European Parliament put the Russian propaganda at the same level than the propaganda from the Islamic State. Yeah, this is very interesting. The European Parliament say that the Russian propaganda and the propaganda from the Islamic State for terrorism are at the same level. Why? Because the Russian propaganda or the propaganda of the Islamic State they are against our European values. They are against democracy. They are against freedom. They are against solidarity. They are against what is our soul. We are European. We believe in democracy. We believe in freedom. We believe in human rights. And the Russian propaganda and the propaganda from the Islamic State they are against those values. And I am very happy that in the European Parliament, this week, they underline that the Russian propaganda and the propaganda of the Islamic State are against the European value. And we have to take care about that and to face and destroy those two propagandas. That's a good point. Now, another point. You know that uh, this week we, we had a big summit in Brussels, yeah, uh, and that was a summit between uh, EU and Ukraine, and uh, the President Poroshenko was in Brussels. And really, I am very happy about the results. Yeah, uh, we will discuss about that. Come on. Uh, first, uh, a lot of agreements were signed, and uh, and but the biggest uh, the biggest point is that Europe EU will continue to support Ukraine. That's a good news, really, that's a very, very good news. And they want also to continue to uh, put uh, Russia under sanctions. We will continue the sanctions against Russia. Oh, great, great news, because really, we need to do that. And, and that's really good, because you know that without the, those sanctions, Ukraine will be really, really weak. Against, the, uh, against Russia and against Putin. That's a good point. And, and I was waiting for that, for the free visa, free visa regime for, for the Ukrainians. And really, Juncker, the president of the European Commission, said that, according to him, he said that uh, until the end of this year, uh, we will have for the Ukrainians free re visa regime. And great. Well, you yeah, know, I, I want to say that, uh, you know, uh, the Ukrainians, they are waiting that uh, uh, from three years now. And really, if you can do that, please, uh, President Juncker, uh, quickly, <laughs> my Ukrainian uh, friends uh, really are waiting for this visa regime for EU. And, but that's, that's really great that maybe uh, until the end of this year, uh, Ukraine will have this free visa regime. Then for this summit, two points, Europe will continue to support Ukraine and maybe until the end, from until the end of this, uh, of this year, we will have the free visa regime for, for Ukraine. Today, I am very happy to receive the ambassador of Norway, His Excellency Olie. Oh, that's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you too, thank you for the invitation. Then, today uh, you are my guest in this program and uh, I, have, I want to talk with you about the visit of Poroshenko mm -hmm. in Norway. Yes. What was the goal of this visit and the issues? Mm. Yes, uh, President Poroshenko visited Norway on the 18th of October, mm -hmm. a one-day visit. Uh, it was actually, a, let me first say, it was a historical visit mm -hmm. because uh, it's the first time ever that uh, a Ukrainian head of state has visited Norway. So uh, we were uh, having uh, great expectations for this visit, I think both on the Norwegian side and on the Ukrainian side. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to say that all went very well. Mm -hmm. And both uh, the Norwegian and the Ukrainian parties were very pleased with the outcome of the visit. Mm -hmm. You see here yeah. uh, the president uh, uh, Walking into, I think that is uh, that is uh, yes, the business yeah. seminar at the business school in Oslo, mm -hmm. uh, which was attended by uh, a great number of 
business people, Norwegian business people uh, interested in the Ukrainian market, mm -hmm. as well as students, because this is, you see here, uh, the students uh, and the business uh, people applauding the president when he arrives, together with the prime minister. Mm -hmm. So there was a full day seminar and the president and the prime minister um, uh, came there uh, uh, in the afternoon and, and gave speeches and in interventions. And what 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 will do? You have some already some results about the uh, about this mm, this meeting. Well, I think uh, um, we have tangible results in in, in the form of, uh, of of documents and agreements. Mm -hmm. uh, we signed uh, a joint declaration, mm -hmm. political joint declaration, uh, which kind of gives gives the directions for the Norwegian Ukrainian cooperation mm -hmm. cooperation in the years to come, um, where. Uh, we stated that uh, Norway and Ukraine are partners and will be partners uh, in the future. We uh, reiterated our support for, for Ukrainian territorial integrity mm -hmm. and sovereignty uh, within, um, within uh, internationally recognized borders. And, uh, <coughs> and Ukraine uh, uh, reiterated its uh, commitment to reforms and its direction towards Euro-Atlantic uh, integration and, uh, and, and what, what, what about because I know that um, you have some nowhere have some business in Ukraine mm -hmm. and um, can you no, talk a little <laughs> bit <laughs> about the business the business yes. of, the business, uh, yes. of Norway in Ukraine I think uh, uh, our, our main commodity in, in Ukraine is fish Mm -hmm. uh, about 85% of our exports to, mm -hmm. to Ukraine mm -hmm. is fish and seafood. Mm -hmm. I think you probably have seen uh, Norwegian fish in the shops yep. in, in Kiev. <laughs> I hope you have tasted it as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. um, so, so we sell a lot of fish. We have a big company uh, here established called Pelagia. Uh, with our local uh, subsidiary, Egersund Fisk, mm -hmm. which is the main uh, exporter. But there are also other areas which are have, uh, have potential, uh, for instance, uh, uh, oil and gas equipment. Mm -hmm. That's also, of course, uh, Ukraine is also uh, uh, an oil and gas country mm -hmm. uh, as producer, and we have uh, technology and equipment which can uh, help the Ukrainian companies to extract uh, more uh, from the resources that and, they, uh, they already have. And I know also that you, you, this big, big business uh, in, 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 in Ukraine, but also I know that. You have a big, very big uh, support package of Norway to yes, Ukraine. Yes, Can we you have. discuss about that? Yes, uh, we have a support package which was actually launched by uh, our uh, Prime Minister Erna Solberg when she visited uh, Ukraine in November of 2014. So the President's visit was kind of a, mm -hmm. uh, an invitation which she uh, launched at that point. Here he is in the Parliament, meeting the Speaker of Parliament actually. Um, and the support package uh, this year is about 22 million euros. And we are uh, focusing on uh, uh, four main areas. Mm -hmm. First is energy, mm -hmm. energy efficiency and nuclear safety. Mm -hmm. And then it is uh, judicial sector reform. Mm -hmm. And then we have a trade uh, facilitation, trade adaptation, especially to European standards, mm -hmm. where we have experience through our yeah. EEA agreement. Yeah. And then it's also huma humanitarian support mm -hmm. to uh, especially the IDPs uh, in eastern Ukraine. So these are the main areas we then, work then, on. Then Norway is very, very engaged in Ukraine. We are very engaged and uh, we have been uh, uh, a strong supporter of Ukraine. But since uh, since uh, Euromaidan and uh, yeah. and we are still uh, uh, a strong political supporter of of, uh, of Ukraine and its reform uh, program. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I know that Norway with France we have a common point. This is uh, the Yaroslav, uh, the two Yaroslav daughters. Uh, and uh, <laughs> the history is here. Yeah. And uh, can you speak a little bit about this really historical point between Norway and Ukraine? Yes, this is very interesting because, you know, in the Viking Age, when Kiev Skarus uh, uh, existed in the 9th, 10th century, Norwegian and Scandinavian Vikings came to Kiev. They worked for the princes as guards and different functions. Uh, uh, maybe security guards, mm -hmm. 
Uh, and uh, some of these Vikings uh, brought back uh, fiancés from uh, Kiev to Norway. And uh, especially one uh, case when uh, King Harald Hardrode, who was the, the last Viking king and the founder of Oslo actually, uh, our capital, uh, he uh, brought uh, to Norway uh, Elisaveta, or Elisiv as we call her, the daughter of Jaroslav the Wise and the sister of Anna of, uh, of France. Yeah. And uh, they married and she became uh, Queen of Norway. So there we have a, a very strong historical link. link. So, uh, and this link is uh, very well known in the history of Norway because uh, you have a king. It is absolutely. It's 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 well known, and uh, and I hope we can uh, can celebrate uh, uh, Elisiv here in Kiev as well. So, uh, because I think this is a, this is a very you know strong link between ourselves ourselves uh, the Ukrainian and Norwegian peoples uh, historically speaking. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is also a very nice common point with the history of France because uh, exactly. yeah. yeah, and what will be the future of the engagement of Norway in Ukraine? I think we uh, this visit uh, confirmed that uh, that uh, Norway is very engaged and stays committed and engaged in Ukraine. Uh, I think Ukraine has a great potential as a, both a political partner and an economic partner for our business people. Um, we are uh, strongly engaged in in supporting the reform program in Ukraine. Yeah, I saw you 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 really insisted in that during this uh, this meeting. Exactly, and and we also, of course, uh, I mentioned the areas we work, especially uh, with uh, Ukraine, on, mm. and uh, it's important uh, for our future relations also and for the business uh, development that also Ukraine stays committed uh, uh, and determined to uh, carrying out uh, the, the reform program. They have started so well, and so much is achieved already, uh, and. Uh, Going in that right direction, I think we have a, a good future uh, for for our relations. Then thank you very much. Thank you. This is uh, that was very a uh, pleasure to see that the all the engagement of Norway uh, to support Ukraine first. Thank you very much. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you and for the invitation. You see you. All well. That's the end of my program. I hope uh, to see you next Sunday. And then, to uh, watch you. Au revoir. Navagida.